Okay, now that we know what a unit cell is, we're going to demonstrate to you a couple different calculations using what we already learned about counting how many atoms are in a unit cell and what a unit cell is. And we're going to pull forward from our back other calculation processes that we know how to do. And I'm going to show you um, how to pull it all together in a couple different problems. Okay? So this first one, if you read through that, seems a little bit complicated. We have a nickel. It says it's face-centered cube. It tells us how long the edge is. And then it wants to know the density. So let's start by kind of drawing out what they say we've got. It is a, what kind of cube? It's a face-centered cube. So I want to draw a face-centered cube. In a face-centered cube, we have a nickel at each corner. And there is, draw that back here, back corner. We got one in the back corner. And there is a one on each face. So how many faces does a cube have? I should take that line down here. How many faces does a cube have? It has six faces. So I'm going to draw those faces as little squares just so that um, we know that they're different than the um, other guys we see, one, two, three, four, one back here, five, and one in the very far back corner here, I mean back face. So there's six faces there, and this is our uh, unit cell, and it tells me the edge length. It tells me it's 352.4 picometers. Okay, so that's what we know with regard to that. And then it says, what's the density? So we have to go back into our brain for this. What is the formula for density? Well, it's mass over volume. Now, what I promise to you is you have all the skill set to come up with the density of that, knowing that density is mass over volume. It's just a matter of seeing how that information is there. Well, if you know an edge length, could you get the density? I mean, could you get the volume? Well, sure. Volume is S cubed, side length cubed. So we could get the volume. So we got that one licked here in a moment. What about mass? Well, let me ask you this. Do you know how many atoms are in that unit cell? Or should you know how many atoms are in that unit cell? Yeah. If you know how many atoms you have, could you get how many moles that is? Well, it seems ridiculous to talk about that in terms of moles. But if I knew how many moles I had, and I knew it was nickel, and what is the, um, I have to go to a periodic table for this, but if you go to a periodic table and you look up nickel, you can get the molar mass of nickel, and it's 55.84 grams in a mole. That's my conversion. If I knew moles, I could get grams. If I knew grams, I could get moles. So I've got the pieces that I need. Let's just go out and solve each of these pieces. Let's start with the mass. Okay? I'm going to go from atoms to moles to grams of this tiny little unit cell. Because this is what I know about density. Now, I should have said this already. If the Density is what we call an intensive property. It does not depend upon the amount. So if we knew the mass to volume ratio of this tiny little unit cell, it would have to be the same density of the whole thing. Okay, so that's what I, I know about density. So I want to get the mass of this little piece, of, little piece, this little unit cell. All right, so it is a face-centered unit cell. Let's practice counting atoms. There are eight corners. Each corner is one-eighth of an atom, so that's one atom for the corners. It has six faces, and each face is a half of an atom, so six times one-half is three. So I have four atoms, but I don't want atoms. I want moles, right? So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms is one mole. So now I've gone from atoms to moles. And then I don't want moles. What I really need is grams because density is mass over volume. So I use this piece of information, 55.84 grams in a mole. And now I know how massive that unit cell is. Now do you think that's going to be a really big number or a really small number? This little tiny unit cell 
that's made up of four atoms is not going to have a big mass. It's going to have a tiny mass. And its value is, hmm, let's see if I can find it. I've got it here. It is 3.898 times 10 to the minus 22 grams. All right, so now I know the top number, the mass. Now we're going to work on the volume. We know the volume is the side cubed. We need the density. In this problem, it's asking for it in units of grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, so I need to know the volume in cubic centimeters, and this is in picometers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, this is volume. I'm going to take my three. 52.4 picometers, and I'm going to convert it to centimeters. Don't want picometers. I want, I have to go to home base first. I want meters. One picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters. Now, I don't want to stay there. I'm going to go on to centimeters. One centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters. Okay? So now I've got my picometers going to meters. And if I take this number, and I cube it, I will have centimeters cubed. So what is the value? It is 4.376 times 10, and it's a tiny volume, to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. Okay, so we've got a tiny volume, and we have a tiny mass. Does that mean we're going to have a tiny density? Well, let's see here. I want to put the density in this little box here so that it's close to where my formula is and I can see it, okay? Density is mass. What's my mass? 3.898 times 10 to the minus 22. Divided by volume. What's my volume? 4.376 times 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. And if you plug that into your calculator, in order to obtain density, you have 8.908, 8.908 cubic centimeters. And we ask ourselves, is that a reasonable number? You know, does it make sense? Well, what is water? Water has a density of one cubic gram per cubic centimeter. I lost my gram. Oop. Water is one gram per cubic centimeter. A piece of nickel ought to fall to the bottom. Um, and having numbers in the um, 1 to 10 range is very, very realistic. Uh, lead is up around 11, gold is around 22, 23, somewhere like that. I'm just, I know it's in the 20s, early 20s. Um, you know, and, and so that's a reasonable number for us. So that is um, how you take your information of a unit cell and do calculations that you already know how to do in order to obtain a value for density. We're going to do another example here after I have a chance to erase my board um, of how to use unit cell information in a calculation. Okay, so this problem is a little bit different in that what are we given? We're given the density. What did we do in the previous problem? We were trying to obtain the density. In this one we're being given the density and um, we're giving the edge length, and we're going to figure out the atomic mass of this metal. So let's think about what's, what we have. I am going to draw my unit cell. Okay, What kind of unit cell is this one? It said it's body centered. So I've got, go ahead and draw my back portion. Okay, I've got an atom on each of the eight corners, and I've got one right smack dab in the middle. It's body centered, so I'll draw a box to represent my center one. All right, and I don't know um, what the metal is. I'm trying to figure that out, or at least figure out its um, atomic mass. It tells me the edge length, and it says it is 0 0.28664, and the unit is, in this case, nanometers. So it tells me that about it. And the other thing it tells me about it is the density. And the density is 
7.8748, and the units are grams per cubic centimeter. Now, what we see is that it's asking us for the um, atomic mass. And what you need to know about atomic mass is numerically, it's numerically equivalent to, I don't know what symbol I should do, I will talk about that in just a minute, to molar mass. Okay, atomic mass. Atomic mass of carbon-12, it's 12 AMUs. The molar mass of carbon-12 is 12 grams per mole. It's the upping of the scale. So they're equivalent in number, but different units. And what we want to know is the atomic mass, so we can get the molar mass we'd be set. If I were asking this as a test question, um, I probably would say, what's the molar mass, and not make you make that connection. But molar mass has units of grams per mole, right? It's the mass per mole of our sample, and we usually use it in terms of grams. So those are the two things that I need to know. I need to know the mass of this unit cell, and I need to know how many moles of this atom are in this unit cell. Well, what do we know? Let's work on this bottom number four first. Let's get the number of moles. Okay? How many atoms are in this unit cell? Well, there are two atoms, right? What do I want to know? Not the atoms, but the moles. So we cancel atoms, and we go to moles. And what's the relationship between atoms and moles? Well, that's Avogadro's number. So one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And that will tell me it's a tiny, tiny number, right? Because we use moles to represent large scale, it's a tiny scale, so it seems very strange to do this, but that doesn't matter. It'll help us get our answer. 3.321 times 10 to the minus, should be a tiny number, right? Minus 24 moles are in that unit cell. So that gets me that piece. The other piece I need is the mass. Okay? Let's think about what we have. We know the edge length. What can you get from the edge length? Well, you can get the volume. I have the density. Density has got a job. He can convert me between cubic centimeters and grams. I can use that as a conversion factor. So that's going to get me my mass. So let us get going with this. I have, and, and the density is in cubic centimeters, and the only way I can use that is if I've got my volume in cubic centimeters. So I'm going to take that 0 0.28664 peak, uh, nanometers, nanometers and convert it to centimeters. So I don't want nanometers. I want to go first to home base, meters. A nano is 10 to the minus 9 meters. And then I go from meters to centimeters. I put a 1 with the centi, and it's meaning with the base at 10 to the minus 2. Now when I take and I multiply this out, well, I'm not going to do that yet. I will. If I take all of that and I cube it, it will leave me with cubic centimeters, right? So let me take a pause, it's not quite the mass yet, and do that calculation and get my cubic centimeters. I end up with 2.355 times 10 to the minus 23rd cubic centimeters. But I don't want to stop there, I want to get to mass. So I'm going to cancel my cubic centimeters, and I'm going to go to grams. Okay, what has units of grams per cubic centimeter? My density. Remember, its job is to convert between cubic centimeters and grams. So I'll put the 7.8748 grams with the cubic centimeter, and that will give me the mass. The mass now is 1.8546. Now, will it weigh a lot? Certainly not. It's a very tiny mass. Okay? So now I know the mass. Boom. Finally. So I know the two pieces I need in order to obtain the molar mass. So the molar mass is going to be the mass, 8546 times 10 to the minus 22, a very tiny mass for this cube. Got to get my minus in there or it's not a very tiny mass. Divided by my moles, which was 3.3. 
times 10 to the minus 24 moles. Two very tiny numbers, but when you divide them, you get a reasonable 55.84 grams per mole. Is that a reasonable molar mass? Yes. What would be an in, a reasonable molar mass for a metal? Well, what's the lightest metal? The lightest metal is lithium. It's got a mass of about six or seven, okay? So anything less than that wouldn't be good. Um, and, you know, you go up to the really heavy guys and you might have 200. So if you have a number metal that's 4 billion, you know you did something wrong. You know, think about the reasonableness of your number. And metals in that range, you can even go to the periodic table and say, hmm, I wonder what element has got a molar mass of 55.84. I'm going to back up this bus. 55.84. Is that what nickel was? Yes, it was. Well, I bet you my neck, I bet you this metal is nickel. So, um, how is that possible? 55.84, 55.84, no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. The molar mass of nickel was 58.62. I was going to say, we can't have it be a body centered in one example and a face centered in the other examples. Couldn't be nickel. Um, so, nickel did have a different molar mass. But we could go to a periodic table and say, well, you know, what element could that possibly be that has a molar mass of that? So, just want to leave you with this thought. Is there anything in this calculation that we haven't done along the way? No. We learned how to use density to convert between grams and cubic centimeters way back in chapter probably one, okay, in first semester general chemistry. Um, do we already know what molar mass is? Yes, okay, we have got these concepts. Do we know how to convert between uh, length units, yes. Do we know how to you go between atoms and moles? Yes, these are skill sets that we've already learned. The only new thing that we've added is the concept of this little unit cell and how many atoms are in that. So trust when you're faced with a problem that looks complicated that you have within you all the skills. You've just got to figure out how to put the pieces together. And it's not about memorizing a solution, it's about seeing the pieces, knowing what you know, and start putting those pieces together and letting your units, your friend the unit, do the work for you.